Hey guys, welcome to the channel Gen Did Commando. My name is Ryan and I'm a former Royal Marine from the United Kingdom. And today we're going to be reacting to the Gatlin gun on steroids, M61 Vulcan. It just sounds hideous, doesn't it, guys? We're not going to waste time with introductions today. We're going to get straight into it, guys. The M61 Vulcan is a Gatling gun on steroids. Whoa. <laughs> right, okay. That sounds unbelievable, guys. It isn't possible with the human eye to see a bullet as it leaves the muzzle of a gun. But in the case of the General Dynamics M61 20mm rotary cannon, it isn't just a single bullet that can't be seen, but literally hundreds each second. With a rate of fire that exceeds 6,600 rounds per minute, that's more than 100 rounds leaving the barrels each and every second. Right, so that's, is that more than the A-10 Warthog? I think it is. Isn't the Warthog like 3,600 or something? It's like double that? Might be wrong. Let me know in the comments, guys. That thing's going to tear up armor. It's going to tear up ships. It's going to tear up vehicles. It's going to tear up airplanes. You know, this thing would be inhumane to use on a person. It's It's got to be used on something massive. It's going to tear it up. The key to this is the barrels, six of them, which are electrically driven, allowing for both the lightning fast cyclic rate and in helping keep the barrels from overheating. This also increases multi-hit probabilities when compared to a single barrel. Hang on a minute. That's what the a 10s got on it, hasn't it? I'm pretty sure the a 10 has this on there. I might be wrong, man. The Vulcan War Born. While this might seem like cutting-edge 21st century technology, the original M61 was developed after World War II by General Electric wow. and first introduced in 1956. But the concept to utilize multiple barrels dates back a century earlier. It's based on the Gatling principle, which permits a high rate of fire while also reducing heat and barrel erosion. The M61 Vulcan is the deadly weapon of the Civil War era Gatling gun developed by inventor John Gatling, who wasn't looking for a more effective killing machine. Rather, he developed his rapid fire gun. Yeah, of course he wasn't. Oh, I didn't want to didn't want to make a, an effective killing machine, guys. It was just a, you know, it was a peace experiment. <laughs> As a response to the carnage he witnessed during the American Civil War, Gatling saw how many more soldiers died of disease than from gunshots and sought to develop a weapon that could supersede the need for large armies and believed that deaths from the disease would be diminished. General Electric took up Project Vulcan in 1946 to develop the 20mm rotary cannon that could be capable of firing 7,200 rounds per minute. The use of multiple barrels minimized barrel erosion and heat generation, which prolonged the weapon's life. In modern aircraft, the M61 was designed to be hydraulically driven and electrically primed. It was also developed to utilize a linkless ammunition feed system. You know, guys, it's absolutely crazy to think that this thing was designed on the ground as a result of trying to stop that many casualties on the on the ground from from forming due to uh, having having less numbers of soldiers there. Uh, and this idea, you know, what hundred years later is being utilized on aircraft. It's crazy how things develop, especially in war, all right? Some of the greatest technological advancements we've ever seen have started life out, you know, as a, as a requirement for war. It's crazy. A new Gatling gun? With the development of jet aircraft, engineers with the United States Army Air Force determined that a higher rate of fire would be necessary and determined that single-barrel revolver cannons would not be up to the task. Instead, designers of the armament division of General Electric considered the 19th century concept 
of utilizing multi-barrels instead. General Dynamics, which acquired the armament division of General Electric, currently produces the M61A1 and M61A2 improved versions with That's a lot just a look at the size of that beast. It's a scary looking piece of kit. I don't care what anyone says. Ladder being 20% lighter and is meant for applications where weapon system weight reduction is critical. Most aircraft versions of the M61 are hydraulically driven and electrically primed. The gun rotor, barrel assembly, and ammunition feed system are rotated by a hydraulic drive motor through a system of flexible drive shafts. The round is fired by an electric priming system where an electric current from a firing lead passes through the firing pin to the primer as each round is rotated awesome. into the firing Absolutely position. Absolutely awesome. A lighter version of the Vulcan developed for use on the F-22 Raptor, designated M61A2, is mechanically the same as the M61A1 but with thinner barrels to reduce overall weight to 202 pounds. The rotor and housing have also been modified to remove any piece of metal not absolutely needed for operation and replaces some metal components with lighter weight materials. The FA-18E F Super Hornet also uses this version. Mm -hmm. The Vulcan's rate of fire is typically 6,000 rounds per minute, although some versions, such as the F-106 Delta Dart, are limited to a lower rate, and others, a7 Corsair have a selectable rate of fire of either 4,000 or 6,000 rounds per minute. The M61A2's lighter barrel allows a somewhat higher rate of fire, up to 6,600 rounds per minute. <laughs> oh man, if you don't like that sound, drop a comment below. If you do, drop a comment below. Applications and First Combat Use The Vulcan first entered aerial combat on April 4, 1965, when four North Vietnamese Air Force MiG-17s attacked a force of 10 escorting North American F-100 Super Sabres and 48 Vulcan-armed and bomb-laden F-105 Thunder Chiefs, shooting down two of the latter. The first confirmed Vulcan gun kill occurred on June 29, 1966, when Major Fred Tracy, flying his F-105 Thunder Chief with the 421st Fighter Squadron, fired 200 rounds of 20mm into a MiG-17 that had just fired a 23mm shell through one side of his cockpit and which exited out the other side. When the MiG-17 flew in front of him after making his pass, Major Tracy opened fire on him. The Vulcan was later fitted into the weapons bay of some Convair F-106 Delta Dart and General Dynamics F-111 Aardvark models. It was also adopted as a standard in the Teen Series Air Superiority Fighters, F-14 Tomcat, F-15 Eagle, F-16 Fighting Falcon, and F-A-18 Hornet. Other aircraft include the AMX Ground Attack Aircraft and the F-22 Raptor. It was fitted in a side-firing installation on that. the Fairchild AC-119. Look at these. One, two, three. You've obviously got a different variant there of the same same concept, isn't it, really? These things are just smashing down the, the fire, guys. The firepower is unbelievable for these things. And some marks of the Lockheed AC-130 gunships and was used in the tail turrets of both the Convair B-58 Hustler and Boeing B-52H Stratofortress bombers. The M61 is also the basis of the U.S. Navy Mark 15 Phalanx close-in weapon system. <laughs> wow. What are you going to do? You're doing nothing in front of that. Jesus. Wow, guys. Okay, so 
the M61 Vulcan is a Gatlin gun on steroids. Yeah, that's exactly what it is, really. Pretty fine description, to be honest with you. Especially when you look back at the original Gatlin gun, what it was designed for, what it's being used for now, and how it is now. It's amazing, guys. I've got a lot of respect for that weapon system. I would not want to be in the firing line of it. There you go. But please like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'd really appreciate it, guys. Drop a comment below, say hi, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.